and they look so cool doesn't matter what you put on the cover it's going to suit your journal because whatever style you use you would put on your cover you can put these little journals in a pocket or have them hanging out at the top here so I've put this one in the pocket of my little flip butterfly page this method will just hang on to the page itself I can slide that up or down and they are a very handy little tab to make so the way I've made these little journals are so they can be put in a pocket they're not meant to be thick and bulky I make this sweet little size here as well as this size here that's a little bit bigger that fits perfectly on half of this a5 size so it's ideal to make as a a little bit bigger journal for a bigger pocket you can make it in this exact size here because i've supplied the template for you so let's get started i'll start off by showing you how to prepare your template so once you've printed out your pattern pieces so just cut out your cover and your mat piece once you've cut out your pattern pieces the mat piece is optional and all that is is this decorative piece of paper that's just a little bit smaller than your cover to make this little no so journal you need two sheets of paper a piece of cardstock for the cover and a bit of glue for the cover I'm going to use this oatmeal colored cardstock it's a 216 GSM from Kazaz and like I said the color is oatmeal so this one's really nice and this is the A5 size so you that's about how much cardstock you need and I end up making two sizes in this I make this sweet little size here as well as this size here that's a little bit bigger that fits perfectly on half of this A5 size you're going to love how easy this is to make put the cover aside for a second and fold over your A4 or letter paper fold it in half till you get it to be the A5 size if you're not using A4 paper and you've got four sheets of A5 paper that is fine because what we're going to do is we're going to cut off this fold line here so that we end up with four sheets of A5 size paper now we're going to fold that in half again you need everything to be level you can finger crease it or get a nice sharp crease with your bone folder I'm going to get my cover now and I'm just going to fold it in half so I'm just going to put my pages in my cover and this is where you would stop if you're going to use this size you don't need to put your pattern on here and cut this down leave it at this size the only thing is you won't be able to use this template here you'll have to figure out the slits yourself but once you've made this in this size you'll be able to work out how to do it you just mark it where you want these slits to be so we're going to put the template with the red dash line on the fold line of your book so I'm going to mark the top the bottom and the the edge here then I'm going to use my square ruler if you haven't got one of these square rulers have a look at the link below this video and check them out they're brilliant so I'm just going to cut the top off in a few passes it's always good not to try and cut through all of these pages in one go 
turn it around making sure none of these pages move while you're doing this all right now we're gonna remove the cover just for the time being we'll put that aside so now we've got our our pages i'm just going to take off the front page here and leave it folded there and i've got three pages in this little group here this is where you bring back this pattern piece here which is your pages layout cut guide you do not need to cut these pieces out they can stay on your sheet for one piece it says here you need to cut one and this pattern piece c says three so when you lay your page on here you need a mark here on the fold line and a mark here on the fold line and we're going to cut between those two dots where the red line is so that's for that one single piece of paper page then for the piece three it's got three pages we're going to mark it here and mark it here this time we're going to cut from the dot to the outside edges of the page so we need to open the pages up make sure they stay together even though my dots off to the side a bit i'm still going to make sure i cut from that dot down the fold line of my pages then I'm going to turn it around without moving any of my pages because I need them all to be the same. If you need to, you can transfer your dot across there so you can see it. And then cut down there as well. Rub out your pencil line because it'll show up in your pages. So that's that one done. Now this one here is a bit easier because it's a single page. But we need to cut between these dots rub out those dots so you can see they've got the slit there and this one is just slit at the top and the bottom now this is the fun bit it's the no sew bit pick up your group of three pages and roll it a little bit of a knack to this to roll it as tight as you can but loose without flattening it so that you don't crease your pages then you turn over your book page so it's facing that way and then poke the three pages inside that slit pretty easy so far then when you get to there let these pages go where those cut lines are and let it open up because it wants to open up anyway and then just feed them in that slit line until they open up flat then line them up on the top and the bottom and then close all the pages together isn't that amazing no sewing yet all of those pages now will not fall apart so now we're going to put it in to the cover but it won't stay in there if we just do that so we've got to glue this first page here to the cover now just a pro tip here open up your book and start at the back it's a pretty good idea to practice from the back to the front you want a good quality glue for this glue sticks not my favorite glue but for this style of little journal it does seem to work good and i'm going to find the fold line and glue those together i'm gonna clean that mess up now you can see even though this is a glue stick it has made my cover curl it's a good idea to use your bone folder to really flatten that glue down onto the cover and if it still curls when we put the matte piece on the front 
that'll help bring it back to its flat state if not you can put it in a uh, book press so let's do the front now you can pick it up or you can just turn it over whatever works I'm not worried about the edges because we're going to trim them back once more again I'm going to use my square ruler so we've cut the top off the bottom and the side it's so easy to make now this is the base of your no sew journal done I'll show you now how easy it is to just cut out a mat and put that on the front now for this one here I used some off cuts of my Edith Holden pages I had lots of strips that were left over from down the side so having your mat template is perfect because you can just put it on here and test out if the scraps you've got is going to fit on your cover so that's what I've done for that one and then I found like this April is cut off but I found one with October instead of putting it across the page I just set it on an angle and then cut off the overhang and then on the back I just used all of the text so for this one I'm going to use some of these fussy cut pieces that I've got and maybe an embossed piece of cardstock so I'm just going to use my matte template to cut this out that looks fantastic so now I've got all these little fussy cuts here and you know why they're called fussy cut that took ages to cut out so I'm going to add some color to this first go around all sides or just three sides I'm just going to use my Helma fabric glue and just glue that down centering it on the cover now the fun part <laughs> now this could take me ages because I'm an overthinker and as soon as I figure out what piece I'm actually going to put on here because there's some gorgeous pieces I love the jugs they look fantastic which one the blue or the pink I love the pink but I think the blue just breaks it up a little bit so I'm going to add the jug and the flowers to that Oh, I think that looks quite sweet exactly the same pattern made in so many different ways this little one here what I've used is a really old airmail envelope it was so fragile I could I could not have used it in any other way but to glue it on the front as the mat and then added the stamps and then ink stamped over the top of those stamps that one's blank there's no reason why you can't just use copy paper this one again is totally blank nothing but writing pages for this one here's another idea if you've got a bible journal I've used plain cardstock and a matching copy paper and I used this rubber stamp instead of using it in black I just used it in this lovely I, I'm not sure I can't remember the color now but use a different color and then I've just glued this beautiful little crocheted cross on the front of it and to put this in place instead of adding it to a pocket put the hidden paper clip on the page push it all the way down and then open it up to the back page once you've got the back page there just slip it under your paper clip and it'll hold it there so you don't have to just put it in a pocket this way you get to use it while it's sitting there it's easy to remove and it looks beautiful on your page for the bigger version and what I've done for this one is used some of this rice paper I just tore it around the edge and just glued it all over the front and the back 
and then just use one of these beautiful little clusters on the front. Don't forget if you made a cluster book and then you went ahead and made a heap of these clusters, get them out and use them. I'll put the link to this cluster book and how to make these little clusters in the description box below. And made some tags and put the tags randomly on the pages. And that is a little tuck spot. So while we're here, I might as well show you how I've made these little tags. They're removable. Normally, we fold our cardstock in half so that we've got a little tab that folds open. And when you put these on your pages or on your cover, you've got to glue them on or staple them on or they just fall off. But this method will just hang on to the page itself. There's no gluing it onto the paper. I can slide that up or down and they are a very handy little tab to make. So I'm just going to cut two separate tabs out. There, I'm going to fit two on there just. First thing, colour them if you're going to colour the edges. It just gives that lovely defined edge. I do it all the way around, only on one side. And this is my oatmeal colour cardstock. So then I'm going to turn one of my tabs over to the wrong side. And I'm going to use my precision tip again, the Barely Art. And I'm only putting a little bit of glue across the top, just in a rectangle here. Not over gluing, just a little bit there. And wrong sides to wrong side, put them together. Line them up. So I've got my two ink sides showing on the outside. Just gently squish them. If I squish them too much, the glue might come out. I don't want any glue coming out. All right, so that is now my finished tab. That's how easy these are to make. So I can come now and grab any page I want and just slip it between the part that I did not glue and that's good to go. If you want to put a Tracy Fox label on it, just pick one out that goes with your cover. I've just glued this one on off camera just to speed things up. If it gets in the road or the side of your pocket, just put it on the top. Put him back in this pocket. And you can either have it hanging out the top so you can see it at the top of your page or you can push it all the way in. If you want to know how to make this butterfly flip page, check out this video here.